sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude so that uh, we will receive the word of God and we will uh, enjoy and celebrate the the death of Jesus Christ and the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. So this morning, uh, let us all focus uh, upon the Lord Jesus Christ and we are going to listen about the Lord's Supper, the Supper of Lord or the Lord's Table or the Holy Communion. So uh, let us turn our attention to, uh, for, there is a 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses, 20, uh, uh, 11 verses 24 and 25. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, the necessity of observing Lord's table. The necessity of observing Lord's table. And you know, we have to think about why we are observing this ordinance. Okay, so this is an ordinance which is established by Jesus Christ. This is an ordinance by um, established by Jesus Christ, and we have to think why we are observing this ordinance. You know, usually the people are participating uh, in the Holy Communion without knowing the purpose of the Holy Communion or the need of the Holy Communion or importance of the Holy Communion or uh, what is the outcome of the uh, of the participant of uh, this Holy Communion and you know some uh, some uh, uh, people are participating uh, only because uh, we know that the previous day uh, uh, the fasting prayer is there you know Saturday fasting prayer is there I don't know how many of you came yesterday uh, but you know uh, some people are participating in the Holy Communion Union only because uh, on the Saturday, the previous Saturday, we have the fasting prayer, so we have to come. I mean, uh, participate in the Holy Communion on Sunday. And other people are uh, just uh, uh, they, they they don't remember that there, there there is a Holy Communion on Sunday. I mean, simply they came here on Sunday and okay, oh that uh, Holy Communion was there, so I I should come. I mean, participate in that. Otherwise, what pastor will think about that, or the other believers will think about that. So this is the, these are the reasons that the people are mostly uh, participating in the Holy Communion. You know. But we have to know what is the meaning of the Holy Communion. You know, usually we are having this Lord's table on uh, every 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 month. You know, every month maybe the first Sunday of the of the month. But you no, know, when we are taking part of the Holy Communion, we should know why we are observing this one and why we are conducting this program or this ceremony. I mean, while we are gathering together. So that's the reason that I am uh, uh, going to talk about, I mean, the, the necessity of the observing of the Lord's table. Okay, necessity of the observ observing of the Lord's table. And the first of all, let me tell you, this is to, this is actually, it's a commemoration of something. Okay, so that's the first point that I would like to share with you. This is a commemoration of something that means that is to remember something. That is to remember something. So when we are attending in this Holy Communion, and when we are taking a part of this Holy Communion, that Holy Communion or Lord's Table reminds us something and that will help us to remember something. What to remember? You know, we have to remember many things out of this communion. You know, when we are taking part of this, we have to remember many things. You know, sometimes, you know, we are uh, celebrating our birthday or celebrating our um, uh, anniversary or something. You know, we know that uh, it is already mentioned in the, in, the, in, the, in the calendar, you know, yearly calendar. And it is there. And we are uh, celebrating, we are just looking forward for that date. And we are saying that, okay, this is the day of my birthday and this is the anniversary day. And we are waiting for that. You know, we are waiting for that to celebrate only because we know that that day is a significant day in our life, right? You know, we are celebrating that and we are looking forward for that particular date only because that day is a that day is an important day for us and it's a significant day for every one of us okay so that's the reason that we are waiting for that celebration the same time you no know, when we are participating in this holy communion and this is actually a celebration 
This is actually a celebration. We are celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. No, we are celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. So that's the reason that we are celebrating this Holy Communion and we are waiting for that. I don't know how many of you are waiting for that Holy Communion to be conducted here. No? Eagerly waiting, oh, this Sunday we have the Holy Communion. I have to be there and I have to, I mean, I, I, I mean uh, participate in that. You know, there are many people, uh, I mean, uh, 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 what is that, uh, uh, participating or, uh, I mean, uh, attending in this uh, service, uh, even uh, through the Zoom. But those people are sitting at home, but they are not taking the part of this Holy Communion. You know, if they come here, they can take the part of this Communion, right? Otherwise, they cannot take the part of this. Okay? But we, the people, those who have come here, we are taking part of this and we were eagerly waiting for that. You know, there will be somebody unknowingly came here and they are taking part of this. But there are many people, those who are purposefully, they are coming, oh, we have to take part of the Holy Communion because when we are attending or when we are taking part of the Holy Communion, that can remind us many things and through that we are remembering, remembering the death of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. That's the reason that we are making this as a significant day for every believer. When, if the date of birth is a significant day for a believer, if an anniversary is a significant day for a believer, when, most probably I understand that the, the birth of Jesus Christ and the death of Jesus Christ is an important day for a believer. And we believe that this significant day became important for a believer only we got the got the I mean beneficial things from this um, out of this death of Jesus Christ, right? You know, Jesus died for our sins and Jesus died for our salvation and we received the salvation. Now we are enjoying that presence of God. We are enjoying the blessings of God only because of the death of Jesus Christ. So Jesus died on the cross and we are now enjoying. We are clapping our hands and we are singing together and we are enjoying the songs and enjoying the prayer meeting, enjoying the worship. Why? Why? Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So we are remembering the death of Jesus Christ and even Jesus said, remember something when you do this, you do this celebration. Okay. When you are celebrating something, when you are remembering something, right? You know, when you are uh, uh, celebrating your birthday, you are remembering something. And you are giving thanks to the Lord. Oh Lord, we thank you for this life. Lord, we thank you for, I mean, I mean enabling me to to, to to born in this world. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that we receive from your Lord in, I mean, after my birth. Man, so we are giving thanks to the Lord and we are remembering the, 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 the significant events which happened in our lives. So that's the reason that now we are celebrating this, uh, I, mean, I mean, Holy Communion. And even, you know, when you read uh, 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 Matthew chapter 26 verse 17, uh, chapter 26 verse 17, you know, Jesus already conducted Holy Communion during the celebration of the Feast of Passover. We know what is the Feast of Passover. You know, Jesus was conducting the Holy Communion during the time of the Feast of Passover. You know, what is the fast, I mean, Feast of Passover? In the fast of Passover feast is to remember how God delivered the people of Israel from the Egyptian bondage. Then, so, the people of Israel, they were... I mean, celebrating or they were having the feast of Passover only to remember the, the deliverance of the people of Israel from the bondage of Egypt. Is that right? Is that right? It, it seems that it's not right. Okay. So when the people of Israel were celebrating that, I mean, Passover, the Feast of Passover, they are saying and saying, they are singing that the Lord has delivered us from the Egyptian captivity. So that we are celebrating this Passover. Okay? So the same way, Jesus was establishing the Holy Communion along with the Passover, along with the Passover of peace, the Feast of Passover, only to tell us that you and me are delivered from the bondages of sin. 
we are delivered from the captivity of satan and sin and the world so that's the reason that jesus was establishing that holy communion along with the passover feast you know just remember this morning that when it's a commemoration that means we have to remember how we were delivered from the bondages of the sin once we were in sin and once we were in the world and once we were i mean living and doing everything according to the will of ours and the the will of uh, satan you know the, we were encased with the worldly things in this world but this is a great privilege that god has given us that god has called us i mean out of uh, all these worldly things and god has called us out of uh, all the sinful nature and made us the children of god and we are the children of god we are the children of god that's the reason that we are just remembering these things and uh, we are i mean commemorating that and this i mean ordinance enables us to remember the sacrificial death and jesus and also our deliverance hallelujah so this is a, a commemoration I mean, action of a, of a, of, a, of a believer when we are attending in this ceremony. And second thing is, it's an anticipation. Okay, what is what is the Holy Communion? What is the Lord's table? It's an anticipation means it gives us a future hope and it gives us a future expectation. Or bhavi leku la pradesh thayrenda dhananda. Holy Communion number one. Alay, namakka. So when we are sitting in the presence of God and we are participating in the Holy Communion, we know that we have a hope. What is that hope? The future hope. The future hope that it tells to the believers and it is telling that I mean there is a hope. Jesus is coming soon. You know, read Matthew chapter twenty-six, verse twenty-nine. Matthew twenty-six, twenty-nine. Amen. So it says that Jesus said, "I mean, I am giving you a giving a future hope and expectation that He is coming soon, and also His reunion with the disciples in His Father's kingdom." I mean, so we observe this, uh, I mean, Holy Communion as an anticipation of return of Jesus, and we will celebrate with Him at the marriage feast of Jesus Christ. So we will come back to that point in Revelation chapter nineteen. You know, when we are part, I mean, taking part of the Holy Communion, it reminds us. Okay, it's an anticipation that there is a future hope, there is a future expectation that you have to remember that your 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 Jesus Christ is not not yet come, but Jesus Christ is coming soon. At the same time, to the world that we are saying, to the public that we are saying, Jesus is coming soon. At the same time, we remember that Jesus Christ is going to have a reunion with the disciples of Jesus Christ and with the with the believers of Jesus Christ. Man, we are the believers of Jesus Christ, and we are the Christians. And Jesus says that I will come back, and we will have a reunion. We will have a reunion, and we understand that Jesus was um, on this world, and he was doing his, uh, I mean, uh, public ministry, I mean, uh, for uh, three and a half years in this world, right? Uh, during those days, there were many disciples for Jesus Christ. Okay, and after that, only we came to Christianity, right? After that, only we came to Christianity. Now we say that we did not see Jesus Christ physically, right? We did not see Jesus Christ physically, but the, the disciples of Jesus Christ, the apostles of Jesus Christ, they saw Jesus physically. But we did not see Jesus Christ in physically. But we know that Jesus Christ will appear one day in air, and we will see Jesus, and we will have a reunion with Jesus Christ. Amen. And also, we will have that feast of marriage, and we will we are going to celebrate with Jesus Christ. Amen. So when we are celebrating the Holy Communion, we understand that Jesus Christ is coming soon, and we will have a reunion with Jesus Christ, and we will enjoy and we will celebrate the marriage supper of the bride and bridegroom. That's what we read in I mean, Revelation chapter nineteen, verses six to nine. Let us read that verse, maybe uh, uh, Revelation chapter nineteen, verses six to nine. Okay, so uh, uh, six to nine, right? Okay, this is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay, we already studied uh, uh, from uh, Revelation chapter nineteen uh, for our uh, Friday Bible study, right? You remember that? Okay, chapter nineteen is completed. Okay, so uh, now we are in 
chapter 20, right? Yeah? Chapter 20, and the, this week we are starting with the 21, right? Okay, so, uh, you know, um, I don't know how many of you are attending in that, okay? So, so those who are attending in that, they will know that, okay, we already covered all these portions, okay? Otherwise, you will not know that, okay? Uh, anyway, remember, you know, uh, we have all the all the recordings of the uh, Book of Revelation classes in uploaded in the YouTube. So, you can, if you are not able to attend for the Bible study, you can listen from there also, okay? So, listen. So, in chapter 19, verses 6 to 9, it talks about the marriage supper of of the, the lamp, the marriage supper of lamb. And there is a bride, and there is a bridegroom, and there are invitees. Okay? The invited people are there. Okay? So we are going to be the, we are going to be the bride of Jesus Christ. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus is the bridegroom, and we are going to be the bride of Jesus Christ, and we are not the invitees. That means, we are not the invited people, but we are the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, for that supper, for that, I mean, a day of celebration of the marriage of the bride and bridegroom, we will be there enjoying with the bridegroom. Amen. So, this is the expectation that Jesus Christ is giving to the disciples and to the people of God when he was, I mean, I mean, he was observing the, the, the Holy Communion. Okay. So, this is the, this is what we can see there. So, it's an anticipation of future hope. We have a future hope. We have a future expectation that Jesus Christ will come soon and we will have a reunion with Jesus Christ. And third point is, it's an, it's, it's a participation. It's a participation. Amen. So, it's a participation in the sense, it is to, I mean, come together in unity. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. Yeah. 26, 27. Read that one. Okay, so drink from it all of you, right? Drink from it all of you. What is the meaning of that? It's a participation. That means that to come f uh, come together in unity. You know, when when we are participating in then when we are conducting the Holy Communion, all the people of the church, they are coming together, right? They are coming together and taking the part of that. That means there's a unity in coming together and also it's a, it, we are doing it, I mean, corporately, not solitarily. Okay? No, you know, for example, if you are taking the bread and the, and, and the wine and uh, eating it and drinking it from the home, I mean, you're sitting alone there and you are doing that at, at, at uh, I mean, uh, at home, there is no meaning at all. Okay, there is no meaning at all because you know this is a this is a this is an establishment of the participation. You know, everyone coming together and participating with unity, with unity. Okay, if you are doing that solitarily, then there is no meaning of the unity in that. But it, it's a, it's a fellowship, right? Everyone coming together and taking part of the same bread and same wine and that means there is a unity among the people of God. So this will give us the expectation that the people of God are coming together especially in 1st Corinthians chapter uh, 11 verses 70 to 34 you will understand that you know it says participating together and come together five times it is written there. You know, in this particular portion, five times it is written, come together, come together. When you are coming together, when you are gathering together, I mean, you have to participate in this, in this program, in this ceremony, only because, I mean, this is a participation program, it's an act of participation, and it's a congregational act. It's a congregational act. No, it doesn't mean that you know you can you can take a take a bread and uh, take a wine and uh, I mean eat it or drink it at home. There is no meaning at all. You know this is established to to tell the people that there should be a unity when you are coming together. When you are coming together, Hallelujah! And that's the reason you know in uh, in Corinthians when we read uh, we understand there was disunity. Uh, among the people of God, among the believers of the Corinthian church, there was disunity. Okay, there were there were divisions. Okay, that's the reason Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthian church that I mean you must be I mean coming together in unity. 
and taking part of the holy communion without the unity if you are taking part of the communion there is no meaning at all so that's the reason apostle paul said come together come together it's a participation it's a fellowship it's a communion together and we are enjoying that participation and the blessing of the participation and the unity you no know, uh, back in uh, india uh, i still remember that we used to uh, conduct the uh, the the uh, feet washing ceremony and also holy kiss okay here we don't have that right hmm? the holy kiss means uh, the holy kiss after right after the uh, the holy communion we used to uh, give the do the the holy uh, holy kiss also those who are sitting nearby okay so those who are sitting nearby and we are and the vishuddha chumbanam alle vishuddha chumbanam kodukkuvarunu appo vishuddha chumbanam kodukkuna samayath endha sambhavikkunnu ariyo parappol sambhavikkunnu endha ariyo njan ee unity kurichu paranja so uh, you know uh, somebody will be sitting uh, to the next as a next person who whom he like okay you know because he want to give the kiss you know he he likes okay ipo thomasane ora kishtam allengile yonachan endu yum യോനാച്ചാൻ അവിടുന്ന് മാറിയിരിക്കും വേറെ എവിടെയും പോയിരിക്കും ഇഷ്ടമുള്ള സ്ഥലത്ത് പോയിരിക്കും കാരണം ഇത് കെട്ടുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കൊടുക്കാനൊക്കത്തില്ലല്ലോ സോ അഗൈൻ ദ ഫീറ്റ് വാഷിംഗ് സെറമണി ദ ഫീറ്റ് വാഷിംഗ് സെറമണി വൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് യുനോ ദർ ആർ സം പീപ്പിൾ ചില ആൾക്കാർ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുന്ന അറിയാമോ ആളക്കാരെ നോക്കി വെക്കും നേരത്തെ ഓക്കെ ഫീറ്റ് വാഷിംഗ് സെറമണി കാൽ പാദം കഴുകിയ ശുശ്രൂഷ ദാറ്റ് ഹാപ്പൻസ് മേ ബി ഓൺ ദ ഓൺലി ഓൺ ദ തേർട്ടി ഫസ്റ്റ് ഡിസംബർ okay feet washing ceremony okay we used to do that in india here we don't do that okay so because of many reasons maybe oh i don't know <laughs> okay so when we do that you know when you know the thing is you know sometimes when they are doing that the same thing is happening there also you know some people will be selecting one person okay that person is okay for me i will do the the feet washing of that person and this person i don't like that person so i will not sit with them Okay, this is happening really this is happening you know actually why we are celebrating or why we are conducting all these programs in the church to tell the people and to to prove that there is a unity among the believers right there is a unity among the believers washing the washing the legs or uh, I mean wiping out the water or uh, uh, giving a holy kiss it's good to do that but at the same time there is a meaning for that there is a meaning for that without knowing the meaning of that conducting or i mean taking part of the holy communion or feet washing or holy kiss or something there is no meaning at all that's the reason i said when we are here it's it's a participation it's a participation of every believer every believers are participating in this ministry in this ministry in this ceremony i mean so it's a participation we will go to the fourth uh, i mean point maybe the fourth point it's a proclamation what is holy communion it's a proclamation what we are proclaiming read uh, uh, maybe first corinthian yeah first corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you ah. proclaim the lord's death until he comes yeah so what we are proclaiming when we are participating in the holy communion endo josam vyarikkano adutha adutha aicha namukku feet washing okke vechekam nam sanjirikkunnu ഓ ആ ശരി അവിടെ ഞങ്ങൾ സോക്സ് ഇട്ടുണ്ട് ചെന്നോണ്ടിരുന്നേ ഓക്കെ എനിവേ വി വിൽ കം ടു ദാറ്റ് പോയിന്റ് ഓക്കെ ഫോർത്ത് പോയിന്റ് ഓക്കെ ഫോർത്ത് പോയിന്റ് ഇറ്റ് സൈസ് ദാൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പ്രോക്ലമേഷൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പ്രോക്ലമേഷൻ വാട്ട് ടു പ്രോക്ലൈം ആ ടു അനൗൺസ് ഇൻ ദ ചർച്ച് ദാറ്റ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് കമ്മിങ് ഓഫ് ജീസസ് നോട്ട് എറ്റ് ഹാപ്പൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് തിങ് ഓക്കെ വി ആർ അനൗൺസിങ് ആൻഡ് വി ആർ പ്രോക്ലൈമിങ് ദാറ്റ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് കമ്മിങ് ഓഫ് ജീസസ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് എറ്റ് happen to the church believers at the same time to the public to the outsiders that we are saying that jesus is coming soon jesus is coming soon you know if jesus is not at come again we will have to participate in this, this next month also okay next month also if jesus is coming then there is no need of conducting this holy communion in the next meeting or next uh, i mean month or something I mean so our expectation is that Jesus Christ will come soon especially maybe today he may come okay maybe Jesus will come today now are we ready for that this is the question are we ready for that when Jesus is ready to come but we are not ready sometimes you know so we are announcing and proclaiming to the believers those who are gathering together that Jesus the return of Jesus is not at happen but again the next point is we are proclaiming to the world that jesus is coming soon that is our expectation 
Hallelujah. So that's the reason that this is a proclamation and we are announcing Christ is the only way for the salvation. When, when we are participating or when we are I mean, observing this ceremony or this uh, I mean, ordinance, we are saying that Jesus is not at come, but Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Let us tell to the people, let us announce to the people, let us proclaim to the people that Jesus is coming, coming soon. That is our expectation and we are just proclaiming to those people to be ready for that. And we will go to the fifth point. The fifth uh, I mean, reason that why we are celebrating the Holy Communion. It's an act of self-examination. It's an act of self-examination. Let us read 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what, what, what do you mean by that? You know, when we are participating or conducting the Holy Communion, we say that, you no, know, most of the time what is happening, there is no self-examination. Okay? The people are not uh, I mean, uh, thinking about themselves or they are not thinking about the, their weakness or their problem. They are not judging themselves but they are ready to judge the next person who is sitting with him. Okay? You know, most of the time that is happening. Okay. 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 He is not right. Yeah, most of the time that is happening. Now we are thinking the next person who is sitting with me, he is not qualified enough to take part of this, this Lord's table. But think about what is you and what is your situation and how you are living. Are you ready to live that holy life? Then only you will be able to participate in the holy communion, right? You know, most of the time we are ready to judge other people. We are ready to judge other people. The next person who is sitting with us. But this morning, the Bible says that when, when you are self-examining yourself and when you are doing an examination into your life, when that comes to the point that you are able and you are, I mean, permitted to attend in the, in the Holy Communion. Hallelujah. That much, I mean, the holiness and that much purity that God is expecting from a believer. Hallelujah. So this is the right time that we have God in the presence of God to self-examine. To self-examine. Do your self-examination and say to the Lord, oh Lord, I am coming to your presence of God. I am not bringing all these people of God, but I am, I am coming to your presence of God. I need your cleansing, oh Lord. I need a washing, oh Lord. But the Bible says that when we are doing a real self-examination, that will lead us into a conviction. Okay, when we are doing a real self-examination, not judging other people, but judging ourselves. But that's the reason that we read that verse, right? When we are judging ourselves, there is no judgment. But when we are not judging ourselves, there will be a judgment. Without judging ourselves and participating in the Holy Communion, sure, there is a judgment is coming. But at the same time, when you are self-examining, when you are judging yourselves and attending and participating in the Holy Communion, there is no other judgment. When this is the right, I mean, right I mean, time and this is the opportunity that God is giving for the people of God to self-examine ourselves. And when we do the real self-examination, that would lead us into the conviction and that Conviction will lead us into the confession and that confession will lead us into the repentance and that repentance will lead us into the transformation. That's the right time that we are taking part of the Holy Communion. When there is, if there is no conviction, if there is no, I mean, what is that? Uh, conviction or confession or repentance, there is no transformation. But if there is a transformation that you can say that, oh, I am ready. I am prepared enough to take part of the Holy Communion. So this morning, let us all commit us with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. As we were listening from the word of God, I mean, what, are the, what are the reasons that we are I mean, attending or participating in the Holy Communion? Hallelujah. There is a meaning. There is a meaning. We will come to that point. Let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Most of the time, most of the time, we are not just thinking about why I am taking part of this Holy Communion. Most of the time, we do not know what is the need of it. We do not know what is the importance of the Holy Communion. We do not know what is the outcome of the Holy Communion. There are many outcomes in the Bible, consequences in the Bible. If you are particip participating in the Holy Communion without a I mean, good conscience, 
I mean, if you are, I mean, uh, with a with an unholy manner, if you are conducting or if you are taking part of the holy communion, there are many consequences happening. In the same chapter, it is written. I don't want to read all those portions, but remember, Hallelujah! There are outcomes out of this. There are consequences if you are participating in the holy communion in an unholy manner. Hallelujah! At the same time, I mean, what is the holy communion? The holy communion, the Lord's table, is a commemoration of many things. It remembers. I mean, it will help us to remember. I mean, remember many things in our lives. It will help us to remember the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Just remember what is the what is the benefit of the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ? That Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you and me. Hallelujah! It reminds reminds us that uh, when Jesus died on the cross, Hallelujah! And it's a it's a, it's an anticipation. It gives us a future hope, and it gives us a future expectation that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Hallelujah! And before that, can we pray that Lord, the outsiders, the Lord, the the unbelievers, the Lord, the unreached people of God, let them also come to Christ in the coming days, the Lord. Hallelujah! We have that expectation, right? We have the expectation, and we are saying that. I mean, I have a future hope. I have a future expectation that Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah! And let us also. I mean, proclaim and let us also participate in this uh, holy communion and remembering that uh, we are coming together. Let us have that uh, harmony among us. Let us have that unity among us. The, the Corinthian church, the people of the Corinthian church, they were not having the unity. They were divided into many groups. They were having partiality. They were divided. There were disunity. But Apostle Paul said, "I mean, remove all your disunity, remove all your divisions. I mean, become one in Christ and take part of the Holy Communion." Amen. Hallelujah! Thank you, Master. Hallelujah! It's the participation. It's not a solitary thing. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a. I mean, I mean, campaigns. I mean, service, and it's a, it's a participation of every believer. Every believer is our participating in this Holy Communion. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We are doing it corporately. It's not a solitary thing that we are doing. Hallelujah! It's a it's a congregational act of uh, I mean Holy Communion. So let us all I mean join together in one mind, in one accord, and have taking I mean taking part of this Holy Communion. Hallelujah! And also I mean what is that? The Holy Communion. It's a it's a proclamation. What is the proclamation? We are proclaiming to the other believers that our Lord Jesus Christ did not yet come, and the return of Jesus Christ is not yet happen. But we are proclaiming to the world. We are proclaiming to the outsiders. I mean, we are proclaiming to the public that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. Get ready for receiving Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! We are proclaiming that Jesus Christ is the only way to the salvation. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is the only way to the eternal life. Hallelujah! That is the proclamation that we are making through the Holy Communion. And also, what is the Holy Communion? It's an act of self-examination. So that is the right point that this morning we are committing ourselves with the mighty hand of God. This is a great chance, and this is a wonderful chance that God has given for every one of us. Hallelujah! To to, to do do that self examination. Let us think about ourselves, and let us judge ourselves. Hallelujah! If you are having a real self examination, that will lead you into the real conviction. If you have the real conviction, that will lead you into a real repentance. If you have the real Repentance that will lead you a real transformation. This morning, how many of you are praying, "Oh Lord, I need to be transferred." Lord, how many of you are praying? Karthave, any kiru ruvandri karna mehana karthave. Any kiru ruvandri karna mehana karthave. Any kiru ruvandra mehana karthave. And the chetle kuravale shami kena me. And paavangale shami kena me. Netra veer deyo sani prarthi kinnu nda. How many of you are praying, "Oh Lord, forgive me, oh God, forgive me, oh God." Hallelujah. Yes, Master. There are many times uh, the disunity is happening, the divisions are happening, O oh Lord. I mean, many times, O oh Lord, the the thoughts of our heart, O oh Lord, are wrong, O oh Lord. But this morning, God, Jesus is asking you: Do you need a cleansing? Do you need a cleansing? Do you need a washing? I mean, if you are doing a self-examination, the blood of Jesus Christ is there to cleanse you, to 
clean you, to wash you all the weakness and all the sins of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. There is a Savior. There is a Savior who gave his life for us. Hallelujah. There is a Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, he who died the sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. We are remembering that. We are remembering that. And that the Holy Communion is reminding us that my Lord Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and for my sins. That's the reason we are called the saints of God. That's the reason that we are called the children of God. We got the eternal life. We got the eternal life. Hallelujah. We are enjoying the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you have to observe. You have to, you have to, I mean, do this ceremony. You have to, I mean, conduct this ceremony until I come. And until we will have a reunion in the kingdom of the Father. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that we are still conducting this program. This morning, how I many of you are able to I mean, surrender your life in the presence of God? How I many of you are ready to surrender your life in the presence of God? Let's think about uh, our weakness. Let's think about our fa I mean, failures. Let's think about uh, I mean, our own I mean, infirmities and our own I mean, weak points. And let us tell to the Lord, oh Lord, I'm committing myself in the mighty hand of God. Father God, cleanse me, O oh Lord. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. How many of you can pray that? Closing your eyes and praying together. Oh Lord, I did a cleansing, O oh Lord, this morning. Lord, I, I made many mistakes in my life, O oh Lord, in the, in, the, in the previous days. Father God, we need a cleansing. We need a cleansing, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are coming to the presence of God with tears? Thinking about our failures. Thinking about our shortcomings. Thinking about our sins. Asking for a forgiveness in the presence of God this morning. Don't simply take part of the Holy Communion. Without knowing the meaning. Without knowing the meaning. Don't take part of the Holy Communion. Only because it is conducted here. Only because yesterday we had a fasting prayer. The mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let there be cleansing. Let there be cleansing with the blood of Jesus Christ in the, in the, in the hearts of the people this morning. Don't participate as a namesake in the Holy Communion. Know the seriousness of the Holy Communion. Knowing the seriousness of the, of the Holy Communion. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. It's an anticipation. It's a commemoration. It's a participation. It's a proclamation. It's a self-examination. The act of self-examination should happen in our lives. Let's bring ourselves with the mighty hand of God. With tears. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. We are nothing, oh Lord. We have nothing to boast about ourselves, oh Lord. Father God, there are shortcomings. There are shortcomings, Lord. There are failures, Lord. Kartave, the Tigger Sambuchitunda, Bellahir, the Sambuchitunda Kartave, the Lord Shemikaname, Shemikaname, Shemikaname. I request Sister Jaya to lead us in prayer now.